How can you tell if something is a good investment or not? This is one of the hardest questions to answer, and I'm gonna share the key with you in this video. Without knowing the future, it can be difficult to tell if something is a good investment or not. After all, you don't know for sure if it's gonna work out unless you've got a crystal ball, right? Well, this is part of why so many investment professionals preach about diversification and the importance of holding non-correlated assets. But how do you know if an investment is a good idea or not? If you like this video, I'd appreciate a comment and a thumbs up. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please hit that button as well. Now, before going into what a good investment is, let me give you a hint about what a good investment is not. A good investment is not necessarily one that makes money. Now, think about it. Have you ever tried something and failed and said to yourself, well, I'm glad I tried. It was worth trying. Well, if an investment doesn't pay out, that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad investment. For example, let's say you flip a coin. If it lands on heads, you make 60 cents, and if it lands on tails, you lose 50 cents. Well, if you flip that coin a thousand times, you're going to make money. But does that mean you made money every flip? Well, of course not. But every flip was worth it because the return potential was worth the risk overall. With all investments, whether it's stock, options, real estate, precious metals, cryptocurrencies, or starting your own business, there are two primary variables that you have to consider when deciding whether it is a good investment for you or not. Those two variables are probability and profitability. A good investment is one that has a potential return that justifies the potential risks. Probability and profitability have an inverse relationship. Now, this is possibly the most foundational concept you must master before you begin investing. This is what drives valuations. This is what makes it possible for markets to behave in a rational manner in the long term. Now, let me give you an example. As of the recording of this video, the 10-year United States Treasury bond has a yield of 3.83%. Well, that's a number that's not even keeping up with inflation right now. So why in the world would anybody buy one of these bonds? Because it has near as makes no difference a 100% chance of success. The probabilities are high. United States treasuries are considered to be the safest investment vehicles in the world. They're virtually guaranteed that you're gonna get your principal, which is the amount of money you invested, back, plus some interest. Because it has such a high probability, there's very little return. Now, let me give you an example that's on the other end of the scale. In the United States, there's a lottery called the Powerball. The grand prize for the Powerball can get very high. In fact, it has been as high as $2 billion. But a Powerball ticket only costs $2. Think about it. You could invest $2 and walk away a billionaire. Now there must be a catch, right? Well, the catch is probability. The odds of winning the grand prize in the Powerball are one in 292,201,338. So why do so many people play the lottery when they know they have a greater chance of being struck by lightning than by winning the jackpot? Because of the potential profit. If the potential profit was only $50, nobody would buy that lottery ticket because of the low odds. In order to incentivize people to buy a Powerball ticket, the grand prize has to be astronomical because of the low probability. With all investments, there is a balance between probability and profitability. I call this the risk to reward teeter-totter. Riskier investments from a probability standpoint should have a higher return potential than safer investments. The higher the probability, the lower the profitability. The lower the probability, the higher the profitability. Understanding this concept can help you choose whether an investment is right for you or not. Let's examine a popular option strategy to illustrate just how critical it is to understand this concept. I'm gonna compare the numbers for a one month out of the money bull put spread to a one week 
out of the money bull put spread. To keep things on an even playing field, I'm gonna be using the same deltas. Oh, well, here are the numbers. The example one month spread has a potential return on risk of 13%. Without compounding, that's an annualized rate of 156%. A one week spread with the same delta has a potential return on risk of just over 11%. And if you annualize that, that's an annualized rate of 578%. A lot of beginning traders tend to focus only on the return side. Now it's easy to fall in love with the idea of fast short-term returns and as a result these beginning traders tend to lean towards these short-term option trades. But with an annualized return almost four times as high as the monthly trade, there must be a lot more risk somewhere, right? Well, the big risk in this example is called gamma risk. I'm not gonna dive into detail on that right now and what that is, but the point is that the trade with the higher return does in fact have significantly higher risk. Well, this is why it's so important to understand the relationship between probability and profitability. If you're comparing two investments and one of them has a significantly higher return, you have to ask yourself, where is the extra risk? If you can't answer that question, then the odds are that you are missing something and you need to do more research before investing. So to get back to the original question in the video, how do you know if an investment is a good idea or not? Well, the answer is simple. A good investment is one that has a potential return that justifies the potential risk. If you can master this one concept before getting started, it's gonna help you make the best decisions when investing.